And when God looks at your life, he looks past the problems, he looks past the mistakes, he looks past your regrets that maybe you have had, and he looks right into the inside of who you are, the DNA of who he has created you to be, and he looks at you and he says, you are gifted. And so this morning, I want everyone to just say, I am gifted. I am gifted. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 6 says, therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, to stir up that gift, to stir up the gifts that God has placed in your life. And that word stir in the dictionary means this, to move continuously or repeatedly through something in order to mix and create a greater substance. So it says that that word stir means that there's something already there, but as the stirring process happens, something greater is created. And I believe that's what God is saying to us this morning. He says the gifts are already there, the talents are already there, the abilities are already there, but there's got to be a stirring on the inside to create something that is greater than what you thought was actually possible. And so this morning, I want to talk about the stirring for a few moments this morning, and we're going to look at a few points. Number one is that you actually have to stir to find the gift of God on your life. You know, it's not a whatever will be, will be. You know, we have to get past that part of our life. It's like, well, this is the, this is the cards I was dealt. This is the way my life is going to be. No, we have to now tap into something that is greater and stir to find the gifts that are on our life. We cannot just be content with whatever life deals us. We have to stir for something that is greater. And Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, I came to give life with joy and abundance. See, Jesus didn't say, I came to give you a religious, sap, sorry life. No, he said, I came to give you life with joy and abundance. I came to give you a satisfying life. I came to give you something to live for that is greater. And so I want to encourage you, don't just be satisfied to do what you've always done. Don't just be satisfied to stay in the rut that maybe you have been in. You know, you have to stir to find your gifts. And a lot of times people think Christians are passive people. Well, I can tell you at Great Church, these are not passive people, right? These are not passive people. But people think, well, it's a Christian, you know, just deal with the hand that you've been dealt. You're a Christian, just, you know, stay where you are and, and just stay kind of meek and mild and don't say anything. No, God says we have a right to be dissatisfied with our life. If things aren't good, if things aren't going forward, there should be a stirring on the inside of us that there is something greater, that there is something greater that God can do in my life. And the word dissatisfied in the dictionary means this, not pleased with something, feeling that something is not as good as it should be. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever had that feeling like, I'm just dissatisfied. I'm dissatisfied with this particular area of my life. And I'm not talking about being negative, And I'm not talking about being a grump or being a complainer or being a whiner or sitting on the couch doing nothing with your life. That's not what I'm talking about. But I am saying there can be a stir on the inside of dissatisfaction that says, I know there can be something better. I know there can be something that is greater. And in 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 2, it talks about David. And how he was a great leader. And in verse 2 it says, people who are oppressed, people who are in debt and dissatisfied went to him. About 400 men in all and he became their leader. It says, here was David. And he began to attract 400 men to him. And they were depressed and oppressed. And they were in debt. And it says, and they were dissatisfied with their life. And it says they came to David, and if you continue to read a few chapters there, it talks about how David took the men who were dissatisfied with life. David took the men who were in debt financially. David took the men who were depressed. And he, as a leader, began to raise them up. And the Bible calls them the mighty men. They went from the men who were dissatisfied to the men who were satisfied and mighty men. I believe that God is doing something in this season of our life. That God says, I'm stirring something new. I'm stirring something greater on the inside of you, that you will be mighty men. You will be mighty women. And so nothing changes without movement. 
Nothing ever changes without movement in our life. And your gifts will help you discover your God-given purpose. And that's why we've got to stir to look for what are these gifts in my life? What are these hidden talents that are in my life? And so as you're searching for your gift, as you're stirring to find your gifts, I want you to ask yourself a few questions. You know, what makes you happy? What do you enjoy doing? What actions or, act or activities make you lose all sense of time? What activities seem to energize you on the inside? What can you easily do, but when someone asks you how you do it, you find, a hard, you find it hard to explain it because it's just natural to you? What things do you do, pick up, or seem to learn much faster than other people? What does everyone always ask you to help them with? You know, as you just begin to look at some of these questions, there's the stirring and the searching for the gifts, for the abilities, for the talents that God has placed on the inside of you. Number two this morning is God has made the deposit, now stir the gift. Once you begin to recognize that there, this deposit has been made, once you begin to recognize, oh, I notice a gift on my life, I notice an ability on my life, now you've got to stir that gift. And, you know, if you've ever made a cake, which I'm not saying I've made many, okay? <laughs> my kids too, can attest to this. I usually just have someone else make a birthday cake. But, but I wouldn't consider myself a great baker, but I do know one thing about cooking is that if all I do is take the pan, and throw the flour in, and throw the sugar in, and throw the eggs in, and toss it into the oven like that, I know it's not going to work, right? Even if it's a cake mix, it's still not going to work unless something has happened. It has been stirred together. And so if you're just throwing things out there, there's not going to be that life. There's not going to be that potential. There's not going to be that destiny. If you don't take those gifts and those talents, those abilities on your life and stir them together, you're not only one gift. You're not only just one ability. There's many things in your life, and you've got to stir them together. And as you stir them together, you're going to create something that is powerful and significant. And so God has deposited the gifts into your life. It's your job to stir them. Stir them through activity. Stir them through develop them, development. Stir them to create something that is greater. And Matthew chapter 25, verse 19 to 21 says this. Eventually, the master came back from his travels. He found his slaves and settled up with them. The slave who had been given five talents came forward and told his master how he turned five into ten. And he handed the whole lot over to his master. The master said, verse 21, excellent. You have proved yourself to not only be clever, but loyal. You've executed a small task masterfully. So now I'm going to put you in charge of something larger. But before you go back to work, come and join in my great feast and celebration. You know, I, like, I like this translation. It says, you know, you proved yourself to not only be clever, but loyal. Just look at the person beside you this morning and say, you're a clever thing, aren't you? You're a clever thing, aren't you, right? God says, not only have you proved yourself to be clever, but you proved yourself to be loyal. And so, so all of a sudden it says, not only am I going to give you something greater to handle, not only am I going to promote you, not only am I going to use you, he says, but I want you to come away. I want to celebrate the gift on your life. I want to celebrate the development on your life. I want to celebrate and I want to encourage you. You need to be around people who will celebrate the gifts in your life. Be around people who will celebrate the development of those gifts on your life. God has placed talents in our life. And God wants us to be clever with them and loyal. And he wants us to put them to work and begin to multiply what he has given us. So I want you to think about your gifts and your talents. When is the last time you've used that particular gift? When is the last time you've used that particular talent on your life? Are you stirring it? Are you maturing it? Are you developing it? And so I want to encourage you to develop the gifts in your life, to begin to organize your time so that you have some time to develop the gifts. Your gifts call to you and say, I need some attention. Most people's real gifts go unused, untapped, unrecognized, undeveloped because the attention has never been given to their discovery. 
Most gifts are unused, untapped, undeveloped because the attention has never been given to their development and their discovery. And so I want to encourage you this week, begin to look at some of those gifts and talents that are shining out of your life. Those things that you just say, hey, I think I might be good at this. Recognize it, study on it, research on it, read on it, develop it in your life so that it can become stronger in your life. Romans chapter 12 verse 6 says, we all have different gifts each of which has, is because of the grace that God has given us. There is a grace gift on your life. There are many grace gifts on your life. Stir them, develop them in your life. Number three, stir your gift to serve others. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 to 11 says, God's various gifts are handed out everywhere. Have you ever just thought, maybe I got missed? Maybe, you know, I kind of got the short end of the stick. Maybe I got missed out on this. God was giving out a whole lot of gifts, and he, you know, he's got so many children. He doesn't know what to do, and I got missed. It says, no, God's gifts are being handed out everywhere. I believe we can reach up today and say, God, I thank you for the gifts that you're placing on my life right now in this season of my life right now. It says God's gifts are handed out everywhere, but they all originate in God's spirit. God's various ministries are carried out everywhere, but they all originate in God's spirit. God's various expressions of power are in action everywhere. But God himself is behind it all. Each person is given something to do that shows who God is. Everyone gets in on it and everyone benefits. He says, God's placed these gifts on your life. And he says, he's put this gift on your life so that the world can see that God is good. That the world can see that God is alive. And it says, you know, everybody benefits from the gift that's on your life. Everybody benefits from you functioning and and developing the gift on your life. Each person has been given something to do that shows who God is. Everyone gets in on it. And everyone benefits. I want you to say, that's me. I've been given something great to do. And that's why God has gifted you. You know, a lot of gifts fall under different headings, and I'm going to read a few this morning. The artist, the nurturer, the pioneer, the planner, the teacher, the researcher, the administrator, the mentor, the philanthropist, the organizer, the adventurer, the developer, the performer, the entrepreneur, the entertainer, the world changer, the record breaker, the history maker, the life transformer, that there's many different ways that this can show in your life. But God says, I have placed something on your life that will bring a benefit to others. Everyone was meant to benefit from the gift that's on your life. If you keep that gift hidden, if you keep that gift dormant, if you don't develop that gift that's on your life, then other people are missing out on seeing an expression of God's goodness. Our gift was meant to serve people. And so I want to encourage you this week, evaluate how you can use your gift how you can use your gift in a greater way and the opportunities that God has given you right now to be able to serve with your gift. You know, it's in your workplace, in your business, right here in this church, with your family, in your community. Look for ways that your gift can now begin to serve other people and bring life to other people. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 8 says, I'm not saying this as though I were issuing an order, but to stir you to a greater love. God says, I want to stir you to think out of the box. I want to stir you to a greater love for humanity. I want to stir you to use that which he has placed in your life for the benefit of other people. And so I encourage you this week to begin to allow those gifts to come out of your life and begin to serve other people with them. And the last one this morning is stir to honor the source of the gifts. You know, there's many gifted people in the world. You know, you just have to, you know, watch TV or go on YouTube. You're going to see some gifted people. But not everybody takes the gift and honors the source of the gift. Sometimes they just, you know, they're honoring themselves. They're just showing off the gift. But I believe something significant happens when we recognize that gift has come from God and we honor the source of the gift. And the source of the gift is God. The dictionary describes the word gift in three ways. Something given voluntarily without payment in return. To show favor towards someone. Something acquired without a particular effort and without having to be earned. The act of giving a special ability or capacity or a talent. 
And this shows God's grace over our life, that how the gifts and the talents that are on our life, how God has gifted us. God has placed something great on the inside of us. And I want to encourage you this morning that we give honor to the source of our gift. You don't say, well, I'm just gifted because I'm gifted. No, you're gifted because of the source of the gift. And the source of the gift is God. The source of the gift is your creator. You might have even developed the gift. You might have even put in the hours and the hard and the hard works to be able to develop that gift. But the source of the gift is still God. And if we will honor the source of the gift, can I tell you that gift can develop and grow and flourish in a greater way than you ever thought was possible. <laughs>